<laughs> All right, here we are, the final, final interview of the first day of Streaming Media East 2017, and I have with me Steve Vonderhaar from Wayne House Research. Steve, saving, saving the best for last. Huh? Exactly, exactly. Steve actually was um, uh, instrumental in giving some information for an article that I wrote back, I think, in November or early December for Jan the January issue around unified communications. Um, and UC, or as some people call it, UCC, yeah. clearly is of interest to people in the enterprise space. So tell me a little bit about what kind of work you've been doing recently. Just catch me up on the types of things you're doing. Yeah, the, the, the big thing that's driving the whole enterprise stream market right now is the whole notion of integration. Okay. Okay, so we have an environment where uh, the, the old style enterprise platform vendors used to be end-to-end -end providers. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from content creation, content management, distribution, analytics of the viewership on the back end, all in one tidy, mm. tidy integrated package. Okay. And, and those uh, solutions were great mm. for the marketplace in terms of providing guaranteed delivery, making sure that if, if your CEO spoke in the microphone and the camera over here, they would actually get out to people uh, on the other side. Okay, but but right, we're, right. we're getting to a point now uh, that th those on-premise solutions are giving way to a, a new breed of hosted enterprise video okay. platforms. So what, going to the cloud like the media and entertainment space. Is, uh, yeah, and not necessarily fully to the cloud. Okay. Maybe you might think about a hybrid solution. Yeah, I, and, where, and I think hybrid's important because there are some specific things that enterprise may not want to push to the cloud. Security is job yep. one, and some things you just don't want to take behind the firewalls. And right. that's, all, that's all well and good. But when you at least have some elements mm -hmm. of the enterprise platform solution being delivered on a hosted basis, that opens the door for a host of new ways for organizations and vendors to develop products, right. for them how they sell it, okay. and ultimately how they implement it for their customers. Right, right. And it's it's causing more change. We've probably seen more change in the past two years mm. in the enterprise streaming space than the previous decade combined. In fact, it's interesting you say that because I remember at Stream Media West, maybe two years ago, had an enterprise panel and a number of the people there, Lockheed was there, there were a few others, you know, who were people who were well known in the industry, right. saying, we're getting ready to put RFPs out because the systems that we've had for the last 10 years, some of which relied on Windows Media, which was being out of life, yeah. we really need to look for solutions. And two of the things they seemed to say that were driving it was one was end of life technologies. Right. The second was, mobile and how important mobile was becoming to their workforce. Do you see that to be the case as well? Uh, the expectation is uh, that that video that you create, that video that you produce is going to show up any on any device right. that the executive has access to. And that's the key, the executive has access because the average worker may be told you can't have the device. The executive will never be told you can't have the device. You, He's going to say, make it work for my device. Whatever the CEO wants, the CEO gets. Absolutely. And, and if that means having a mobile-enabled enterprise streaming platform, then a mobile-enabled streaming platform is what you're going to get. Interesting. Uh, so is this primar is it primarily driven in terms of content, internal content by all hands meetings, or is it driven by training, or is it driven by a combination of things? Well, it's uh, always going to be tied to the, the organization's specific communications sure. objectives. Sure, so sure. if you have uh, a, if you have something that's driven uh, top down from the CEO, most likely it's going to be a town hall meeting environment where the CEO or top executives are getting out a consistent message to the entire workforce at okay. one time. All right. If it's a bottom up where organizations have to prove out the ROI, right. uh, prove that they're going to be able to pay for the the uh, uh, technologies that they're deploying, mm -hmm. then you're going to be looking more of a training solution, preferably a training solution that, that maybe consolidates or eliminates the need for people to travel. Okay. You can keep people off of planes, out of hotel rooms. That's the clearest, shortest, most direct path to getting uh, ROI and ultimately winning budget approval you for those and I implementations. You both know that the boondoggle, it's a we, beautiful saw it thing. Video, we saw it in video conferencing, right. where we the whole argument prior to 9-11 was keep them off planes. At 9-11, you had to keep them off planes for a period right. of time. Mm -hmm. But since then, it seems like, so So I totally under, I understand the argument of ROI to keep people out of hotel rooms. Yeah. And maybe 
for training where it's an on-demand thing in that yeah. sense. What about for live? Do you see, I mean, do you see webcasting in the enterprise replacing the need to travel? Uh, you'll never replace the need to travel. So like in the 1990s when people were saying that Amazon was going to replace the shopping mall. Right. That, that doesn't happen. It, it augments what you're okay. already doing. So it allows you to do more without as many trips. As it, exactly. So maybe if your team has four sales meetings a year, mm -hmm. maybe you have two that are in um, uh, local or, or in-person mode, and you have two that are done via webcast. So you don't you don't totally eliminate the boondoggle, Tim. Okay, all right, you, we, sorry. You, you, I was you, trying to go anti-boondoggle. No, 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 we possible. got, we got to keep our boondoggles okay. in place. It's what made America great. <laughs> so, but you, if, you, if the, we can minimize it. fathers. No, no, no. Yeah, it, they were on a boondoggle It, it in, was, in it New was York City. the boondoggle with the cheese doodles and beer. That's what, <laughs> that's what did it. But, All right, uh, fair enough. Yeah. History is actually now clear to me in a yeah. way that I didn't understand. Well, I'm before. glad we could set you straight. Yeah. All right, good deal. Anything else in the enterprise space that you see I, as important? I think beyond integration, the whole notion that uh, you got to make sure that your corporate networking is, is tight, in place, and that you can get that video data from point A to point B. Okay. If, you, if you can't ship that data across behind the corporate firewall mm -hmm. without crashing the corporate network, without making IT's hair stand on end, that you're creating some type of security right. faux pas, right, right. Uh, either putting co um, content at risk or putting the entire sanctity of the network at right. risk. The sanctity of the network. You, you, you do not want to do that. So you want to deploy systems that essentially allow you to scale the amount of video that you can deliver so that people will use video more frequently. If you can't get the video from point A to point B, mm -hmm. there's no point in us doing webcasting anyway. So, so does that lead to sort of the, the rise of ECDNs? Absolutely, we're, okay. we're, we're seeing a push towards within the marketplace uh, of, of more and more vendors emphasizing uh, uh, the need for actually standalone ECDN solutions, right, where right. historically we had seen the distribution capabilities bundled into larger right, uh, right. Uh, content portal solutions. Right. Now, because we have these hosted uh, options we mm -hmm. talked about before, it's easier to mix and match solutions from various vendors and get to a point where we can have best of breed solutions at every point of the video right, ecosystem. Right, right, right. And if we have the best of breed solution, Part of that rests in developing ECDN capabilities developed by vendors who are uh, fixated and focused on solving that specific problem. Interesting. And I think there will be a debate that will rage for a number of years to come on multiple standalone CDNs or homogenized CDN. Ultimately, what we find in the enterprise space is, you know, you shop things out, then you bring them all back together. And right. so we, we may find that... 10 years from now, we're saying, oh, we can't have these standalone CDNs. We need to have you an bring integrated them ECDN. But at least it's very good to hear that the focus on doing smart delivery behind the firewall continues to be there as part of the discussion. And, and that's, uh, that's going to be a big part of the discussion. Yeah, awesome. Forward. Great. This has been Steve Vonderhaar with the Wayne House Research. Steve, as always, appreciate your time.